Welcome back to Woodworking with Wes. On today's segment, we're going to be building some end post columns for a large island that we're doing on this current kitchen that we're working on. We're going to show you how to do it from start to finish. Get started on our columns. The first thing we have to do is to nail together the base of our column, the base structure of our column with plywood. We're using a veneer plywood. This particular wood that we're using is a uh, riff cut white oak and so we're going to nail this together as a base of our column and then we'll show you how to put the moldings around the outside. We've cut our pieces and I'll show you how we nail them together. We have one piece that is the full width two pieces that go from corner to corner and one piece that fits in the center. So we'll nail that together and show you how. To nail our base column together, we've cut our pieces the right size. We have one piece five and a half, two pieces four and three quarters, and one piece four in order to create our square that we'll do. I always start with my longest piece first so that I can use my two other pieces as a support while I nail together giving me a nice edge to nail on and we glue and nail. Okay, our next piece we nail together like that and same thing glue and nail. I'm going to turn it around here so I can see it from this side so I can make sure I got my line or my edges lined up correctly. Our last piece will fit in the middle there, completing our column. And we'll nail that in now. Again, I'll turn it around here so I can see what I'm doing. we have it. Or I'll call them all put together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sand this as clear down to our finished sand. We're not going to go ahead and bother to nail, finish the nail holes or fill the nail holes, but we're going to go ahead and sand because once we start putting our molding over the top of it, that'll let this surface already be sanded and taken care of. So we'll do that now. We have our column built. The first thing we have to do is to put our styles on our panel effect, the first one being a corner. Now our corner piece we're going to glue together in an outside corner effect just like this. We've cut our two pieces here and we've put a 45 degree cut on the back side. And I'm going to show you how to glue those together very easily with some tape clamps. All right, we're getting ready to glue together our corner. We have our uh, 45 degrees set to the center and we're going to put it face down and put the sharp edges together like this. We've got to keep the bottom flush and we're going to put some tape to hold it to in place. Now I usually put one piece at the bottom And one piece in the middle, and one piece at the top to get us started. Then we have to run a piece the full length to hold our pieces perfectly together. So when you get all done, you look just like that. And when we turn it over, what we have is a little v-groove and we will rub some glue in there and we tip our v-groove together and it creates a corner. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we have our corner glued up now and we're going to apply that and we apply that on the outside corner. Now this particular post has a cutout ready for a uh, plug receptacle. Our island is huge and according to our code we have to have an electrical outlet at each end. Here and then this is the post on the opposite end of the island with the corresponding post or with the corresponding uh, plug. The outside corner is going to go just like this and be nailed on. We're now going to nail our outside corner to the outside corner of our column. We're going to be using our nail gun with a 23 gauge headless pin so that our nails don't show. But we'll go ahead and put just a little bit of glue on. We don't want a lot because we don't want to have our squeeze out that will be in the way of our finished product. But we'll put just a little because we do want a little. So we'll put that on there. Make sure it's flush top and bottom. We'll put nails on both sides to hold it firmly in place. As you remember, we had a plywood end showing here, and our outside corner has covered that. So we didn't need to worry about sanding that or, or filling that, and this makes a perfect cover and makes a nice finished deal. We're going to go ahead now and put the rest of them on, and I'll show you how we do that. On our column here, we have a bottom and a top. The bottom has a larger uh, rail and the top has a smaller one. This is seven, this is six. I've already pre-cut my stock and we're going to go ahead and nail those on first and then we'll nail our other rail next to it creating our box. Now, all we've got to do is nail on our other our other rail or style, excuse me, and a little glue in the end joint there, just like that. We'll lay our piece of wood in here, flush at the top. All right, we're good. We're going to start at the bottom, work our way up. I'm going to show you a little trick just to make your spacing right. This is the piece, uh, next piece we're going to use. It's the same width. I'm going to put it right here in the center and pull against it as I nail this or style on so that I make sure that my spacing is correct. Up on top here, I have this piece. I don't need to worry about it. But down in the middle, I didn't. So I just want to make sure I have all my spacings correct. And there we are. There's the first box. And we'll turn around and repeat the same process on the other side. To create our rail piece around our plug, we have cut our pieces to the right size. But there's one little adjustment we had to make. Our plug hole is wider than the width of the opening that we've left for our box looking effect. And so what we did is we took a notch or made a little notch in our uh, style stock and made a corresponding piece for our rail that was exactly the right size and the bottom piece of our rail that matched like that, creating our plug box hole and keeping our column effect or our box effect on our column the right size. We'll go ahead and nail all that into place right now. There we have both sides nailed. Now, we made our pieces, our outside pieces, just a little bit thick so that we created an edge that we can putty and sand on both outside corners so that we end up with a smooth flush or smooth finish all the way around as we sand. Okay, while we're waiting for our putty to dry on the column that we just put together, I want to address one thing. You'll notice on our columns we have two paneled sides and two 
smooth sides. The reason for that is one smooth side goes against the cabinet and the other smooth side goes against the panel that will create between the two columns. So this becomes the outside corner, cabinets here, panel here. We do that on all of our columns. All four columns will only have just two faces because we have cabinets in between and panel in between. Now with our putty dry, we'll sand everything out. 80 grit first, then 120, then 150, and then after we get done with that, we'll apply our little inside detail molding. But first off, sand everything all the way through, all three grits. Okay, I also decided that while before we sand our 150, our final coat, we'll go ahead and put in this small decorative shelf piece. It's just, it's actually just a step. Uh, we're going to use a little piece of quarter inch by half inch wide stock. We're going to just tack it in. Our door style that we'll be ordering from the door shop has this style and rail effect on our doors and we're matching that but being as we're doing on the column we didn't order the doors we just are going to reproduce this on our column we're going to do that with these little pieces of half by quarter inch stock and we'll just glue and nail those in We were just a little long on this piece right here until we had to sand just the end of it to fit it because we want it to fit good and tight. Oh, that's what we're looking for right there. Perfect. Now we'll nail that in. Okay, that's our detail. Now we'll fill all these nail holes and we'll sand everything, sand our routes, and we're just about done. Okay, we're all done sanding. We're all done with our post. These are ready to put together and put them with the column and, or with the panel in between and run through the paint shop and then installed in our kitchen. They look wonderful. And our customer, I'm sure, is going to be pleased. Thank you for watching our video on how to do columns, end post columns for a, a kitchen island. And as always, we look forward to seeing you again on Woodworking with Wes. Don't forget to subscribe.